Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. And today, I'm going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 11, questions 31 to 34. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at the circulatory system of a fetal mammal. We've been given two figures um, in the unit stimulus. So figure one is the circulatory system of a uh, adult mammal. And you'd recall from unit one of this exam, we were given a very similar uh, figure with the blood flow um, in an adult mammal. However, the difference is in this stimulus, we're also given this kind of confusing complex um, diagram uh, showing us the circulation of uh, the blood circulatory system of a fetal mammal. Now, some Things to note with the fetal mammal is that the lungs, which we're told in the stimulus, um, fetal lungs, they're non-functional and um, the blood still passes through them, even though they're non-functional and the gas exchange occurs in the placenta. Also, we're told that there are other parts. So of the parts of the circulatory system, they're numbered one to five in the fetal um, circulatory system. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, as shown in the diagram. In the stimulus, um, we see that uh, we have, I guess, it's similar blood flow to an adult where we've got our right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, our lungs, our tissues, the aorta, the, the veins, right? So the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. But the big difference, obviously, is we've got here, we've got our um, systemic veins, our umbilical veins, the placenta and the tissues, whereas as well, we've got the um systemic arter so the systemic arteries and our umbilical arteries so those are the main differences between the adult mammal and the fetal mammal circulatory system now if if we take a look now at question um uh, 31 so just before we dive in actually these numbers up here so the number let's say for example here the 46 is going to represent the CVO, which is the combined ventricular output. So it's just a percentage of the uh, blood flow going through the, uh, the heart, whereas the number here at the bottom is a percentage of the oxygen saturation. Now, straight away, the alarm bell should be ringing where you'd know that blood flow, say, for example, from here to here should be the same because it's going through tissues. I mean, you're not losing blood. But what will change is this percentage. So this percentage is going to be different because blood going through tissues is going to offload oxygen to the tissues, which means the oxygen saturation will decrease, I'm assuming decrease, not increase, but it should change. So you'd know straight away that the blood flow from here should be the same as here, but the oxygen saturation here should be different to the oxygen saturation here. So keep that in mind. Now if we dive into question 31, so it asks, which of one to five are the shunts that normally close at birth? Now, we have to recall how does blood flow through an adult mammal? So let's just go through that and then we can take a look at, uh, I guess, the, the diagram for a fetal mammal, the blood circulation. Remember, in an adult, our, the oxygen of blood comes from the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava, so our veins. So veins take blood to the heart. So it's going to go into our right atrium and then so an adult mammal, it's going to go into the right ventricle. So let's just trace this. So it's going to come from here and here. It's going to go in there. It's going to go down to right ventricle. Then it's going to go through number two here, which is going to go through the lungs. So this is an adult, remember? Then it's going to go through number three into the left atrium and then into the left ventricle. Then it's going to go off into either the tissues, so through four, and the aorta, so the systemic circulation. So that's important to note. That's what's happening in adult circulation. Now, in a um, fetal circulation, we're told in the stimulus that two of these um, uh, that's numbered in a circulatory system, they're shunts, but they're closed at birth. So in a fetal system, we know straight away, if we think about it, in an adult, the right atrium doesn't take blood to the left atrium. That's not how it works in an adult. Also, so we can mark one here, we're not going to take in an adult, in, in an adult, the right ventricle is going to take deoxygenated blood straight to the aorta. That's not how it works. In a uh, fetus, 
it's possible because they have gas exchange in the placenta, which means you might actually have oxygen and blood, which means you can afford to go through straight to the aorta because you have the shunt. However, in adults, we can't. We have to oxygenate the blood here in the lungs before we send it out to the left atrium ventricles and then into the aorta. So therefore, we know that for question 31, which are the shunts, we know it has to be one and five. So these are going to close at birth. So the answer for 31, therefore, has to be B. So now it's going to get a bit more complex, so 32. But let's just think about this logically. So it asks blood flow is going to be, well, into the right atrium or through the inferior vena cava um, is going to be equal or greater or less than blood flow out or through the left ventricle and the superior vena cava. So in the exam, what you try to do is obviously, let's try to figure out what the blood flow percentages are for this region here, because that's what it's asking. We don't have to worry about the blood flow down here because um, that's not going to answer our question. So let's think about it logically here. We've got blood going out here and up here. So we've got 58 going that way. We've got 30 going in this direction here, which means our aorta, we've got a total of 73. But we've got 58 plus, so 58 plus 30 equals 88. So where's the other 15 going? So we know that because it's all coming to the aorta and going up here, it means that up here, so to the systemic circulation, we have 15, so the CVO value, the percentage value here for the, um, uh, what do they call it here? They call it the combined ventricular output is going to be 15. Now, remember what we said earlier, the blood output, even when it goes through tissues, is going to be the same, but the percentage oxygen saturation will be different. We don't have to worry about the percentage oxygen saturation for now, but let's just look at it this way. So blood going into the tissues is going to be the same as the blood going out. So it's going to be 15 up here. Oh, nice. There's a color change there. I don't know how that happened. But um, so it's going to be 15. So we have now, so 15 going into the right atrium from this side. But think about it this way. But we're getting 46 plus 42. So we have 88 up here. So we have to have 88 coming into our right atrium. So we've got 15. So the inferior vena cava, therefore, is going to be, so 88 minus 15, 73. So the CVO is going to be 73% up here. So therefore, that means we've got, so we've kind of figured out the blood flow for the main bits. So now if we take a look at the questions, it asks blood flow into the right atrium. So this way. So it's going to be getting 88. So the CVO percentage is 88 is equal to the blood flow out of the left ventricle. So out of the left ventricle, we have 58. So that answer is incorrect. So 88 does not equal 58. So A is going to be incorrect. B says into the right atrium, so we've got 88, is going to be greater than the blood flow out of the left ventricle. That's correct. So you know that is obviously going to be the correct answer. But let's take a look at the others. It says through the inferior infina through the inferior vena cava is equal to that through the superior vena cava. So 73 does not equal 15. So that's incorrect. Oh, it deleted itself. And um, if we take a look at D, it says through the inferior vena cava is less than the blood flow through the superior vena cava. So remember we had the superior, inferior vena cava, which was 73. Sorry, it just removed itself, but I'll get it back in a sec. And it says um, is less than the superior vena cava. No, 73 is not less than 15. So the answer has to be D. So if I get our screen brush again. Um, so the answer has to be D. Oh, sorry. No, it's incorrect. Incorrect. The answer has to be B. Sorry about that. Because 15 is not greater than 73. Oh, well, um, 73 is not less than 15. So hopefully you can get your head around that to how to answer this question. Um, now it's going to get, uh, I mean, it's, we're going to have to look at now the oxygen saturation for question 33. So question 33 asks, which of the following best estimates the oxygen saturation in the um, SA? So the SA, remember, is going to be uh, the systemic um, arteries. So let's be logical here. 
So we're looking down here. So the first orient, so first orientate yourself about what we're looking at. We're not looking at the top now, we're looking at the bottom. So recall that if we have 62% up here, oxygen saturation, 52% oxygen saturation, it's going to go into the aorta. It's pretty much going to be the average of the two. So, but it's going to be a bit more because um, this value, so 62% of 58 is a lot higher than, um, obviously the volume of blood is going to be a lot greater than the volume over here, which means it's going to be a value just a bit above average. So um, what I mean there is, because it might be confusing actually, I might explain that just a bit better, is that 62% of 58 has more blood volume um, than a 52% at 30, because that will be about, say, 15, whereas that will be about, uh, let's say, 35, 40. Um, so uh, this is going to push up the value. So if we want to find out the oxygen saturation here, it's just going to be 62 plus 52 divided by 2, so 114 divided by 2 equals 57, but we know it's going to be a bit more than 57 based on this value. So we know that the oxygen saturation here is going to be, let's say, about 57%. Now, we're not asked for the oxygen saturation at the aorta. We're asked for the oxygen saturation here at the systemic arteries. What's this going to be? Now, remember what we said at the beginning? We said that the oxygen saturation only changes when it's going to go through a tissue because they're going to get picked up at the tissues. If we're going from the artery to the systemic arteries, or, um, so we're not losing, so we're not going to lose the oxygen because it's not going to be transferred to tissues. So remember, the oxygen is only going to change if it goes through a tissue or, say, the lungs or the placenta. So therefore, the value over here has to be the same as here. So therefore, the answer is going to be 57. We take a look at our options. I mean, a bit more than 57. So the answer for 33 has to be C. So now if we take a look at question 34, it's asking for what the percentage of CVO flow through 4 is. Now, we already calculated this at the beginning. Remember what we said. So we had over here, we had 73. Over here, we had 15. Over here, we had 15. Over here... Yep, so we had those. So we already calculated it because this was 88. That had to equal 88. So, um, yep, so we've already calculated that at the beginning. So the percentage of the CVO flows through 4 is going to be 15. So the answer is B. So if you're still having difficulty um, trying to interpret this flow diagram for the... For the um, a blood flow through uh, placental mammals. I think it's important to just the key here is if you didn't have an, a background knowledge in the blood flow in an adult mammal, um, it would have been difficult for the placental mammal because you had to have a foundational knowledge in blood flow in adult mammal to realize that obviously if the lung, lungs aren't functional here, the placenta is acting as the lungs in a fetal mammal. That's the key here. So the placenta is acting like the lungs. So it's oxygenated here to distribute the oxygenated blood throughout the body. But if you're still having difficulty with this um, unit, you can post your comments in the or queries in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.